Streets and their sidewalks are the main public places of a city. They're the city's vital organs. When you think of a city, what comes to mind? Probably walking down the street. Are there a lot of people on that street, or is it deserted? Is there a lot of trash piled up on the sidewalk, or is it bustling with people sitting outside? If streets and sidewalks are a city's most vital organs, what makes some streets safer than others? Cities are interesting because they're full of strangers and they all come together on sidewalks to get from their home to their destination. Jacobs looks to explain this phenomenon in the second chapter of her book, The Death and Life of Great American Cities. People in cities have this intricate, almost unconscious, voluntary way of walking on sidewalks, following these customs and norms amongst complete strangers. Jacobs doesn't speculate on some of the more complicated social reasons that may cause crime in cities and suburbs. What she seeks to explain are some of the reasons that might make a street safer. She notes three qualities. One is a clear demarcation between private land and public land. These public and private spaces can't ooze together like they do in the suburbs. Two, and one of her most important, eyes on the street specifically belonging to natural proprietors of the street. They're very invested in the street and want to see it thrive. The third is that the street must have users on it fairly continuously. This adds to the number of effective eyes on the street. Jacobs uses the North End neighborhood in Boston as a great example of a safe neighborhood because it has these three qualities. Their streets were so lively in the 1960s that it was a very popular place for people to go to after work to cash their checks. So how do you keep eyes on the street? One way is to have enterprises and public spaces that are used throughout the day, as opposed to a central business district that might only have commuters coming in in the morning and leaving in the afternoon, leaving them deserted at all other hours. Having a variety of enterprises draws people through these sidewalks at different times to different places throughout the day. This makes the sidewalks as in-between spaces more used and safer. Sidewalks and streets often fall victim to the self-fulfilling prophecy. If there's a lot of crime reported in a certain street, or if it always feels desolate, then people just assume it's not a happening place to be, and they'll use other routes. Another way to have effective eyes on the streets are to have these small mom and pop storekeepers. Keep in mind, Jacobs is writing this in the 1960s, and she notes that the North End neighborhood in Boston has a lot of mom and pop shops where they cannot turn their back on the street. She notes a lot Lively Street always has users and watchers. If you've ever been to New York City, you've probably experienced this. Just watching people going on their errands or going to work on a busy street or a busy public park is an event in itself. To summarize, the greater and more plentiful the range of interests a street can satisfy increases its aptitude for safety.